Gerardo here with G-Rod Grills. Today we're going to be making a picanha or a top sirloin cap. We're going to be smoking it. Traditionally this is uh, cut up to little steaks and then you do them over a rotisserie, uh, over charcoal. We're going to be doing it on a pellet smoker today. I'm going to leave it whole as you can see it here. Um, leave it whole as a roast and uh, we're just going to score the cap a little bit, season it and then put it on there for smoke. We're going to be doing what's called reverse searing. So we're really just going to get it to about 10 to 15 degrees before the temperature that we actually want it to. And then we're going to crank the heat up high then sear it on that and it's going to be perfect. And we're just going to carve it up like a regular roast. Bowl. So stick around and we'll get this going. Okay, so here we are. This is a sirloin cap or a picanha. So what it is is essentially uh, it's, it's about a three to four pound uh, cut of roast. Um, that has the full fat cap still attached to it. And I don't really know the butcher terms of it, but this is what it comes like. You can ask your butcher to cut it for you. Uh, you can also find it at Costco, I believe now. Um, but check with your butcher, they should be able to get one for you. It's pretty easy to get. Uh, it's pretty popular nowadays anyway. So it shouldn't be too difficult. What we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna be scoring the top here so that we can get a little bit of seasoning in and we're gonna season both sides. Uh, just before it goes into the smoker for a little bit of heat. So here we go. I'm going to be using a really sharp knife here. It's a Cutco boning knife. Um, and it's, we just want to get in just enough to score the fat. You don't want to cut too deep into it. And then do the same the other way just to kind of crisscross it. You want to cut through the fat, but not all the way through to the meat. Uh, this is just going to allow the seasonings to get in bet between the uh, scoring. So you can see it's going to cut through there, cut a little bit more. Really sharp knife helps with uh, um, doing this step. And there we are. Uh, next, we're going to use um, a little bit of avocado oil. Just gonna use this as our binder, so I'm gonna put a little bit on my hands here. And then just kind of rub it all over. We do the front and the back, or the top and bottom sides, I guess. And go from there. And then I'm gonna be using the Pit Boss Grills Java Mesquite. Uh, rub. Uh, this is like a, a coffee and mesquite flavor with a little bit of salt in it as well. So it's gonna work out pretty good. Beef and coffee actually really go well together. So you see a lot of those uh, uh, coffee rubs that are really popular at the moment. So we're gonna again, we're gonna use in the Pit Boss Java Mesquite. We're just gonna go liberally all the way, all the way around. Pat it in. Now it's not as important to get it onto this fat cap side of things because we're not gonna, uh, this isn't where the meat is, it's not where the flavor is gonna come from, but this is what we're gonna be eating here is the, the meat side. So you wanna make sure you get the, the meat nicely covered. And uh, rub it in. And then if you saw my rib video from before, we're gonna let this you know, sit in the, uh, in the fridge for a couple hours before I put it in the smoke and then I'm gonna put it in there cold as well. Um, the cold for me it helps it uh, get the smoke adhered to it so smoke really likes wet and cold so we're also gonna let this kind of sweat out once we take it out of the fridge so it just that just means I'm gonna let it sit at room temperature for about 10 to 15 minutes until we start seeing a little bit of um, the uh, kind of the natural juices come out of the meat a little bit and it looks a little bit like it's like the meat itself is sweating so uh, that's it that's all we're going to do to prep it for now I'm going to go in the cooler until I'm ready to, to put it into the smoker and, uh, and I'll show you when we put that on there. All right so here it is we're uh, about to go put it onto the smoker the smoker has been preheating at about 225 now for the last 10 minutes uh, it should just be ready to go. We're going to put this right on there, fat cap down, and we're going to let it go until the internal temperature. You see my probes going in there. Um, internal temperature will be at about 115. I'll take it off, crank it up to 500, and then use the flame sear on my pit boss to uh, sear this up. 
Uh, it's gonna turn out about medium, medium rare, uh, probably more on the rare side than the medium side. That's just how we like our roast around here, but you can, if you want it a little bit more, just let it go a little bit longer, 120, 125. Uh, and that'll give you a good medium um, before your, uh, your sear. The probe is inserted onto the side and it goes right down to the middle to the fattest part of the meat. So that'll give you the proper core temperature of your meat. And like I said, 115 is perfect for a um, um, rare to medium rare. All right, I'm just about to put this baby in. You can see the smoke rolling out of here. We're set at 225. The smoke is currently at 220. This is a Pit Boss 440D. Uh, so let's get it going. I'm using a Inkbird IRF4S. It's a four probe um, RF thermometer, wireless thermometer. So this will go over to a base that's inside the house and that's how I'll monitor this until it gets to 115. So let's put her in there. Here we go. So we're gonna put this in here. Um, I'm just gonna turn it around so that the, kind of the thicker part, whoop, lost my probe. So that the thicker part of the meat is uh, kind of facing the hotter part of the element. I'll put that probe back in there and then uh, we'll be ready to go. But yeah, it'll sit in here probably for about an hour, hour, 20 minutes. It'll be 115 internal and then I'll pull it off, turn this up to 500 and then sear it using the sear slide. Right on, see you in a bit. All right, so my uh, thermometer went off at 115. Let's have a look. See on here, well, maybe you can't see it, see if we can get a light on. Didn't work, there we go. Oh, nice and smoky. Nice and smoky, it's gonna be good. So we're gonna take this off, we're gonna rest it inside uh, for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then in that time, I'm gonna crank this heat up in here and uh, we'll bring it back for searing. All right, so we're gonna crank this up, 500. Got the fire going in there. We're just gonna drop this in, right on that. Sear that for about two minutes that side, flip her over and give her another sear on the other side for another two. Next up will be carving time. We're going to rest it after the uh, sear is done for about uh, 10 minutes or so. Let it rest and uh, let it absorb the juices again and have a go from there. All right, so here we are. So that's been seared now. You can see See my sear marks all the way around. It's been resting for about 10 to 12 minutes. It's gonna, I'm gonna let it rest for a couple more minutes here before I start carving it because it's a pretty large cut of meat here. So it probably should rest for about 15 minutes. Um, let it go a little bit longer, but uh, then to go along with the sides and have some roast potatoes and some corn that was on the smoker as well. So yeah, there we are. Uh, just a couple more minutes and then we'll carve it. So let's, uh, one key thing you want to do is that you always want to cut across the grain. So if you have a look, you can see the uh, grain kind of running this way. So we're going to want to cut across the grain. And I'm just going to start on this side, I guess. And that's going to help it when you're chewing on it, it won't be tough. So you want to always make sure you're cutting across the grain and that'll make it a little more tender. There you are. So there it is, a smoked picanha, not in uh, the standard um, way to cook it, um, but uh, it's going to be awesome.